Wonderful story. Now let's head to a very special guest. Special social media, of course, can tell you a lot about someone. If you have the right skills, you can find out everything from a person's mood or who is actually promoting fake news as well on different channels. And Dr Lewis Mitchell from the University of Adelaide deciphers how information and misinformation flows over our social networks. He's also a young, tall poppy science award winner and he joins us now from Adelaide in a series of our discussions on this. Thanks for joining us uh, very early in the morning. Lewis, uh, tell us about uh, uh, how you come across fake news. How do you measure it through mathematics? So uh, one thing that people don't realise about uh, social media when they're sort of posting uh, in their everyday life is that uh, everything that you uh, put online is, is stored there and if you're using a service like Twitter or something like this, um, all of that data is public, you're posting publicly. Um, so it's, it's, it's relatively easy uh, actually to go and access the, uh, the words that people write um, and the, you know, the streams of text that people produce every day. Um, so the sorts of things that we do, we uh, collect streams of, uh, of data coming from people and, and look at the text data uh, and we analyse that to look at how the information actually flows uh, over these social networks. How do you analyse that? Can you explain that to us? Yeah, so it's, um, it's sort of data science techniques. So we use um, a combination of mathematical models. So we build mathematical models of how uh, people actually copy each other when they're, um, you know, uh, retweeting each other or when they're taking little bits of phrases and passing that on in their, uh, in their own written language. Uh, and we actually, you know, basically um, use uh, large-scale statistics, so we count the number of words that people uh, use and we look at the patterns uh, in those and we can calculate uh, quantities, uh, you know, or literally called information um, and start to look at how predictable uh, is the text uh, the patterns in the, uh, the text of one person uh, based on the patterns uh, in the text of their friends. How does that then relate to misinformation? So uh, with, um, I mean we look at the, so the, at the underlying uh, processes, so if there's uh, information spreading or misinformation spreading, uh, you know, that re uh, requires that there's some information flow going on uh, and we sort of look at that, but um, uh, with inf misinformation uh, what you see often uh, is, is people in sort of very closed uh, communities, so people who are, uh, are talking just amongst themselves, uh, who are the ones that are, are spreading information. So the sorts of things that, uh, that we see in our models is that as people get more social connections, as they have more social inputs or just more friends, as their average degree uh, in the network goes up, uh, then they become less predictable. So as you're, you're trying to sort out uh, where the information is coming from, uh, then they, uh, they become, they, they get less predictable. Um, but if you're in a small uh, closed community where you, know, you have ideas bouncing around um, just you know, amongst, a few, amongst a few people, uh, then that's where the predictability is actually very high. And uh, Lewis, who are the people pushing each other out of the way to get to your information, to get to your results so that they can uh, get their messages out to the population? Uh, so yeah, if you want to get your message out to the population, you, you want to be a highly connected node. You want to have um, high what we call betweenness uh, between communities. So if you're if you're trying to uh, start an information cascade, uh, you really want to target those people who bridge between communities. So um, yeah, finding those uh, individuals, uh, you know, that's a uh, that's a, a big challenge. Uh, in social network analysis. Yeah, and oh, well, governments and uh, governments trying to win re-election or, uh, or oppositions would be keen to get their, their hands on it. I, I'm just interested uh, in what you think about fake news. It's really a, a term that's been um, coined by the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. Is it overblown? Uh, I mean, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly a, a really popular term. Um, no, it's not uh, overblown. I mean, in the research community, there's lots of people uh, looking at fake news or at misinformation or disinformation uh, and various characteristics of that. So there was a, you know, it was a really interesting study that came out uh, earlier this year looking at the spread of uh, misinformation uh, online. Uh, and what they found was that um, you know, uh, fake news spreads further uh, and it spreads faster and it spreads deeper. So the, you know, the trees of cascades um, of these uh, fake messages uh, propagate are larger, they propagate further than real news. Um, and unfortunately, the sort of the sad uh, uh, punchline to all of this was that you know you could ask the question about whether was it bots that were spreading fake news. Um, yeah. which, you know, people talk about, and they found that it was actually people. Um, so unfortunately, we are the ones who are spreading the <laughs> fake news. Uh, Lewis, uh, why, why have you chosen to get into this field? You could have had your pick of uh, the of any sort of field to apply your mathematic mathematical brain and mm -hmm. your experience. Why did you go this way? 
Uh, so I, well, I didn't start off wanting to be a mathematician. I started off wanting to uh, to do physics. So you know, a bit uh, a bit adjacent, and I thought that was going to you know be astrophysics. That was going to be you know, creating yep. my own universes and then playing in them and things like this. Um, but it turns out it involved a lot of lab work and you know wrangling old pieces of equipment. Lewis. And I didn't really like that. Uh, and I realised that with applied mathematics, you could. Uh, study things yeah. from the from the comfort of your own desk or from the comfort of your own yep. computer. Um, Lewis, yeah, thanks. So. I'm going to have to cut you off there. Great to meet you this morning and hear about all your work and the Tall Poppy Science Awards. Uh, they're a great thing. So.